This is why I believe this is a cool little game by... Let me double check and make sure I, I rem remember the dev's name. Uh, Sotoraptor is the dev who worked on this, and... Uh, I don't know if I've ever played anything that they have made, but it's just an ambient exploration game where you look at things, you take pictures, and you're like, whoa. So yeah, I'm immersing myself. One sec, I gotta go turn the lights off. Did, I, did you say Brent Terrier? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Brent Terrier design. Oh, I gotta find the, I gotta find the Mongolian throat singing voice again. I gotta... Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. Game contains flashing lights, and it may be unsettling. Discretion is advised. Be very, very wary. This game is a little scary. Once again, you found yourself on the move, unable to get any sleep. You're nestled deep. I mean, this is literally me right now. Thunder went out. You're nestled deep in the routine of another nighttime drive for some relief. It's 3 a.m., and the immense absence of light envelops everything around you. Yet, despite the loneliness of this localized void, Something is following you. Miles of barren, chalked road lay between you and whatever point you decide to turn back. But tonight feels different. You've never felt like this, or you've never felt like turning back less than you do right now. Empty lots, blackened buildings, dimly lit hallways. They all lie awake along with you. With each one you pass along the way, the urge to pay them a visit grows stronger. Those spaces between the spaces, the connecting bridges between different worlds. The bridges that are themselves a world all their own, each leading nowhere. But do they really go nowhere? What do they want to show us? Something tells you the next fuel stop has an answer. I love gas, and I love station. That's my station wagon. What are the gas prices? I gotta fucking know. 289, 310, 365. Very realistic, not gonna lie. Out of the road. Can you get run over? Can I get fucking conked? I wanna, I wanna know. I know, I know, I know. I, I wanna go and explore the funny little gas station, but I also wanna see if I can get conked on the head by a car. Can it fucking happen to me? Could it? Could it happen to me? Oh, I wonder if they fucking had it so that when you're in the road... There's a car. Beautiful. Can it happen to me? Can I get hit by a car? Oh! I think I did. I think I did get hit by a car. It went so fucking fast, though. It went through me. Oh, Mebo! I love Mebo cigarettes. On lunch break, damn it. I wanted a Mebo cigarette. Real bad, dude. Anybody else? Have you ever had a sour gummy worm and it feels like, um... Or like a sour thing? And then it feels like it has hit a specific part of your mouth? That it, it actually feels like a tongue cramp. Endlessly custom pizza. You ever get a tongue cramp? Nah, it's always in your, my lower jaw. I've gotten a tongue cramp of getting like sour candies before. No, I don't. Dude, I don't know what it is. Something, there's something specifically about like, you can get like a weird tongue cramp. And I, I, I don't know how, I don't know why. Pizza. I need to be pizza. I get lymph node cramps when I eat sour shit. Oh, you can literally feel your endocrine system fucking ported up, gooped up, and slopped up through the sludge. What would be in the Bren room? Manifestation of every Brendan bit? Um, it would just be endless, ceaseless screaming. You know how Gigas looks in Earthbound? I th I've never played Earthbound, but I think about Gigas a lot. And I, I often think that if there was some kind of culmination of every Brendan bit, it would look a lot like Gigas from Earthbound. And it would go a lot like... Just noise. Pure noise. Unfiltered and unrepentant noise. I Anything like devoid of humor, devoid of thought. Endless noise. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, here we go. They made this shit a little dark, didn't they? Ah. Move them out. Ah. Oh, I see. I see. What do they got over here? That's a VHS tape. I see. I love the movies. How many people do you think have actually jerked off to the live Brent Daniel Twitch stream? I don't know, but I will tell you this. Back in- I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. Back in college. Um, I had a friend, and I was still reading, like, bad fan fiction as, like, my bit, right? Because, you know, it's- it's- I've- I've, I've done a billion different bits, and I've, I've tried a billion different things. Um, and I was reading bad fan fiction, and I had a lot of- uh, Was I supposed to, like, keep watching that? I gotta go double check. Um, I- 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 I read a lot of bad fan- bad fan fiction, and I had this friend who would put 
my videos in like a playlist sometimes to like watch them when they were bored. Um, one time. Oh yeah, I was supposed to keep watching this. This is cool. So let me let me regale you with this tale. I would read bad fan fiction. I would read like fucking the worst nastiest shit on YouTube for like funnies. And a lot of you probably already remember this like a bit of Brendan history. Uh, but I had a friend who would put this shit in a playlist. One day he comes up to me and says, Brendan, I made a mistake. I fucked to you. And I went, what? Yeah, I had sex to you. I was like, excuse me? Pardon me? Excuse me? And he's like, I brought this girl home. And I have this sex playlist on YouTube of music that I listen to whenever I get down and dirty. And I accidentally put one of your videos in my sex playlist. So confirmed coitus to Bryn Daniel has already happened years ago, back when I was in college. What if a Bryn Daniel stream was the soundtrack to somebody's adult baby diaper fetish roleplay video? Thank you for that. Uh, gee, I don't know, chat member. That's kind of a messed up question you guys there. Gee, I don't know. It is 1 a.m. It is 2 a.m. The freaks are out. But you left it up the truck of your car, it's, the car's gonna get stolen. Oh shit, you're right, I gotta fucking hoof it back. You're so right, but you're so right. I gotta close this shit. Never mind, car's gotta get stolen. This is like the, um, the real shit that I want from Liminal Spaces, though. This is like the- I, I, I do not get scared by, like, scary monster chasing try to kill me. But the- the unsettling nature of just this, and the existence of, like, the- This is just a parking garage. Fucked up, huh? Fucked up, huh? They just got a parking garage and it's kinda fucked up, huh? It's a little fu- they got a fu- they got a fucking parking garage and it's a little fucked up. Waiting for a banana in pajamas to come out and just start running at me with a knife. Ready to kill me. Ready to banana jam with the pajam. It would be the part where Brendan has a big- has to fight a lawnmower in his parking garage. <laughs> it's gonna be a good bit. Gonna love fighting a lawnmower in the parking garage. It's gonna be sick. There we go. Focus. Turn the flash on. Bugs. I got a good pick of those bugs. Don't tell me what to do. We gotta go- good picture us a couple of bugs. The bugs are back. Bugs. 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 Put the bugs in the chair. Eat those bugs. Look for a yummy protein dinner. Need you your protein. In the future, everybody will be eating bugs. You ever play Cyberpunk 2077? They got bugs on the pizza. They put the bug on the pizza. They put so many locusts on the fucking pizza, it's insane. You be slopping up and sliming a fucking hot slice and then bugs. Just bugs. Bug is the most protein. I don't know. I would think a locust, maybe. They got that in Cyberpunk. <laughs> Will bugs be the new anchovies on pizza? I mean, hopefully. I would like to try bugs on a pizza. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I don't want to try a bug on a pizza. Timon and Puma made grubs look way too good. Dude, an entire generation ruined because bugs looked way too fucking sexy. I mean, edible. Edible. I mean, edible. My name is Dr. Worm. Good morning, how are you? I'm Mr. Worm. I'm interested in things. I'm not a real doctor, but I am a real worm. Oh, creature. Bogular and Thogular. Be when I'm in the swamp and I'm talking to my favorite Twitch streamer, Swamp Jimmy. Out there, you come on down to the bayou, run in an airboat, maybe have a good time, maybe hunt a couple of gators. Come on down to the bayou, run an airboat with me, we're gonna have a fucking great time. Come on down to the bayou right now, I swear to God, I'm gonna fucking A, I'm gonna kick your ass, and then I'm gonna give you a sweet, sweet kiss on the lips. Hate this dude, hate this dude. Alien room, alien room, alien room. Fucking Stone Cold again. Stone Cold Steve Austin says, I just whooped your ass! Give me a hell yeah, brother! If you see that gray alien in the chair, give me a hell yeah! Let me tell you something, brother! If I see a little gray alien down at the Broken Skull Ranch, I'm gonna kick his fucking ass! I'll tell you what, brother! You see a little, a gray little freaky creature down here at Broken Skull Ranch, I'm gonna kick your ass! Austin 316 says I just alien your ass! Hell yeah, brother! Open up a can of whoop ass on these alien! Austin 316 says I just kicked your ass! Austin 316 says I made out with a couple of beautiful alien babes on the planet Thre Thecris 3. It's gonna be sick. Gonna be sweet. Gonna be swell. I had nasty, righteous alien sex. Austin 316 says I just fucked you. What? Austin, please. Stone Cold. What? You're get Stone Cold, you're getting weird with it. Stone Cold, you need to chill. Austin 316 says I just made love to your mom. Austin, please. Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin, please. Chill. 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 Call your mom. Tell your mom right now. She gotta come down to the Broken Skull Ranch. Stone Cold Steve Austin roleplay, 4 a.m. real, not sexual. Open up a can of whoop ass on you. What? Which one? What? Give it, can I get a what? Austin 316 says I just. I. I don't remember. <laughs> Austin 316 says Dementia just whooped my ass. Mr. Stone Cold, my mom doesn't make love, she fucks. She gonna make love after I'm done. I'm gonna engage in some consensual, consensual, consexual. Gonna. <laughs> Gonna engage in some coitus with your mother. Gonna be a beautiful affair. 
Roses, ice cream, lilies, everything. I'm going to have so many flowers. Mr. Stone Cold, please. <laughs> imagine, imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin is your stepdad and you have to say, Mr. Stone Cold, do you want to play catch with me? <laughs> Stone Cold, could you play catch with me? You're my dad now. Stone Cold Steve Austin says, get out there in the yard. Stone Cold 316 says, I just played catch with your ass. And get a pick. Ooh, that's a creature. We love creature. We gotta take them all in grayscale to post them on Brinstagram, right? I love saying creature, like creature. I love seeing a creature. I love getting treasure. What are your favorite types of creatures, Brendan? Weird little freaks. I like weird little freaks. Brendan, what monsters scare you? Genuine fear. Uh, probably like dark skinless horrors in the night. It depends. Really unsettling shit. Babies. Fucked up evil babies. The baby in Resident Evil Village still scares me to this day. Fucked up evil babies. I When I was um in high school, and Slenderman, I know this is silly, but like Marble Hornets was big at the time that Slenderman was out, right? I went to my friend and roommate James, who, who still lives with me, uh, lives with me, uh, best friends in high school, and we were at his house uh, hiding and awake from Slenderman for like 48 hours. I think we stayed awake for like 48 hours hiding from Slenderman because we were genuinely fucking just afraid. And that like original simplicity, um... The, the fear and threat of a monster is much scarier to me than the monster itself. Once you show the monster, you've dropped your load. My, my favorite type of horror is horror that just does not show the monster. A glimpse of the monster is way scarier because the idea of horror, or what's great about horror to me, is the fear of the unknown, which I think is just a great uh, fear that every human being has. And something about the fear of the unknown with just a hint of what is going on, what is happening, is always infinitely more terrifying than just showing the monster. And fair, honestly, sometimes you do want to show the monster. You just want to get fucking scary and get really aggressive and fucking evil with it. Two for six dollars! Hamburger, cheeseburger, Big Mac Whopper. Hamburger, cheeseburger, Big Mac Whopper. Hamburger, cheeseburger, Big Mac Whopper. Lie in the board and... We he we hamburger we he we cheeseburger we he Big Mac Whopper lie in the morning. But something about the fear of uh, the unsettling unknown is is always and forever more terrifying to me than the knowledge of what it is. Because once I see the monster and process it, um, I'm not really afraid anymore. Once you show me the monster or the creature. It's really hard to get me back into the scare zone. And I'm not someone who absorbs a lot of horror media either. I'm not like huge, big and round into getting scary thing, right? I'm not somebody who engages in horror media constantly. I mean, I do a lot more now and I used to be a lot more afraid um, than I was when it comes to scary things. But the, the fear of something that might be there yeah. is scarier to me than something that is there. The monster you don't see has a non-zero chance of having massive fucking hooters. I, I also think horror, when it comes to like the monster, you don't have to not show the monster, but it also depends on the vibe. Um, not showing the monster, like Cloverfield is pretty scary to me. Um, but also, you know, it's really scary. Like my most night, my number one fear besides clowns, just straight up clowns, right? The thing, the John Carpenter's The Thing is, very scary to me. Gotcha. Yeah, I got you on camera. The thing is terrifying. The the thing is uh the thing. And the the idea of be watching yourself be consumed by the thing um is scarier than any horror movie and it will always be the number one. I can't fucking watch this cuz it will put me in this like psychosis of of of, of Fuck, fuck, fuck. What if you were the thing? Fuck, fuck, fuck. You'd never know if you were thinged. What if you never knew? You never knew. You wouldn't know. The thing is fucking scary. I do be fucking scared of the thing. Is there a solid reason for the clown thing or did it just kind of manifest? When I was like three or four, um, there was a point where my mom and my dad were still together and they... Krillian! Sorry, one sec. Let me talk about my, uh, my, 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 my clown trauma. I'm... Got him. Fucking awesome. Um, there was a point where, like, they were watching the Tim Curry It on VHS, and they got it stuck in the VHS player, and it would just play on the TV all the time, because they, they would just turn on the VHS player and watch the first tape in the, in the, in the Stephen King It, 
like Tim Curry Pennywise production and it would just be on the TV so just that actual straight up like what in the goddamn okay so there are codes on levels then I need to be looking for got it but yeah I think I think that's where my clown fear came from I told the ball pit story years ago right where like in that same house my parents got a ball pit for me uh and it was upstairs and this fucking ball pit uh was like this ridiculous little like a kiddie pool basically with rubber balls uh, and I have this scar on my knee from when I was a kid playing in the ball pit in the attic I was like three years old I fell down the stairs and I fell out of the ball pit and I imagined this moment uh, with Ave Maria behind it, like three-year-old Brendan falling down a flight of stairs while Ave Maria is playing with ball pits, like balls following after me. Really, it was less of a ball pit, more of like a ball pool. But also, like, when I was three, my parents didn't know what to get me, so a ball pit was pretty on brand, because when I was three, my mom would have been 18, my dad, like, 20. Yeah, around there. So, like, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing, so yeah, putting a ball pit dangerously next to the door in the attic is, is very on brand. I didn't definitely had a tramp. I never had a trampoline. Trampoline with a safety net. I never had a motherfucker. You think my parents had trampoline money? The ball pit was even fucking weird. Did you survive? I lived. I lived. Uh, yes, I lived. Did you survive, Brendel? Yeah, I lived. I'm here, aren't I, bitch? We ate 24 it. We showed the whole drop. Yeah, recreating it. When are we gonna get the Brendan biopic? Gotta gotta get my life story on a 24. See what happens. Brendan, if you're reading this, you've been in a coma for almost 20 years now. We're trying a new technique. We don't know where this message will end up in your dream, but we hope it works. Please wake up. We missed you. Lol. I, the, yeah, sorry. My parents and loved ones, they just heard me say LOL out loud out of the coma. They know I'm here. Lol. I'm Ruffle LMAO. R-O-F-L LMAO. Ruffle Lamau. I'm Lamauing. I'm Lamauing in my hospital bed. M bed source. Lamau. If we a 24 your life story, what insane shit would you put into it? Probably the dreams that I had when I was a kid. Um, and maybe some of the dreams I've had as an adult, because I have always been somebody with a hyperactive over-imagination. My imagination has always been fucking evil, um, and it worked against me, but also just insane. And I I've talked to my childhood dreams before about the giant metal octopus, um, and the, uh, the, the American gothic parents moment. But the, the, like, shit that has stuck with me, I would make sure they were fully realized. If there was a Brent Daniel biopic, we would get the full Metal Octopus dream rendered in glorious 4K. And also, the orb when I vaporized an old man with an orb. When I fucking, when I touched the orb that kills the old pe the orb that kills the old people, and I vaporized that old man, like that memory, the orb that kills old people will be fully rendered, and it will just be treated completely seriously like it happened. You don't know the orb that kills old people story? All right. My first memory, my first memory, the first thing I remember is three years old. I was like three, maybe four, um, and we were at this Adventureland, not Adventureland, but we were at this theme park, and this theme park had a Berenstain Bears Science Center, right? And I'm young, I'm little, so this memory has been corrupted over the years. But for a while, I thought that this was actually how the memory happened. You know those big plasma orbs? Uh, that you can find, which I'll find a picture of them. Those plasma orbs, right? They're, they're... You touch them and the plasma like sticks to your finger and they're like kind of a big plasma lamp and the plasma will follow your finger as you touch it. I, I will get a picture for you. Just, just for reference, I need to show you the plasma orb, right? The Berenstein Bears Science Center had one of these. And... This memory has been corrupted throughout my life. To where in my head... I touched this orb at three years old. I pointed towards an old man in this memory. Like my first memory. A beam shoots out of my finger and vaporizes him. And nobody says anything. And this is the first memory that I can like think of categorically in my head when I'm pulling things back. Is like I touched this orb in the memory. In the Berenstein Bears, Papa Bear, Berenstein Bears Science Center. And I pointed it at an old person and it vaporized them. And at some point in high school, because I was, a, I was a little bit more weird than I am now in a worse way, I genuinely was just like, yeah, I did that. I vaporized an old person. I had a magic moment. Everybody is allowed to have one magic moment in their entire life. And that was my magic moment. And nobody said anything. Nobody did anything. I erased him from existence. I vaporized that old man. 
Brent, I can't find any existence of a Berenstain Bears Science Center existing. I know I've looked it up. I know it's like a part of some theme park I went to when I was a kid, and it had Berenstain Bears, and they just had a plasma orb, but I can never find a picture of the plasma orb. I, I, I swear to you, it was a Berenstain Bears exhibit, and they had like a plasma orb in like the science center. But also, I was three. Brendan Erm, I'm fact checking your your memory right now from three years old. Fucking nerd. I should bully you more. I can't remember. Dude, I don't remember. I even talked to my mom and we have pictures from that time. Like Polaroids from that time. And there was like a log ride. Um, there's a picture of my grandpa with Papa Bear. So I know like I went there. They had a Bernstein Bears exhibit there. Bernstein Bears exhibit there. But like I don't remember like I, I anything but the orb. We cannot find the orb again. The orb allowed this magic moment to happen and said, no morb, no morb, that's orb. Some kid is now like my age and is out there looking for me, trying to get the guy who orbed his grandpa. I gotta find that kid. I gotta find that guy who beam attacked my pip pip. I gotta find that guy and get him. What the? F what is the full metal octopus? Uh, when I was three years old, I had a dream. I had two dreams when I was three and four. Um, when I was really young, that have stuck with me for a long, long time. Three dreams, actually. Um, but the third one is way more fucked up, so I never really tell that one. One of the dreams was, um, there was this day- I've talked about this so much, but like, I- you know, this is a streamer's- a streamer's curses to talk about this stuff. Um, in this dream, there was a daycare center, and I was wearing a leather jacket. I had my blonde curly hair when I was that little. And there was a cool leather jacket I had on, I had sunglasses on. And there was this big, 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 I still gotta find the tape too. There was this big, like, huge, uh, warehouse that was this daycare center in the dream. And there's a line of kids stretching all the way onto the parking lot. I am in this line, my mom drops me off, I get into this line of kids. They're walking in one by one. One by one by one. I get into the building. It's a giant, empty metal warehouse, and in the middle of the warehouse, there is a huge, metal robot. It is a pink metal robot octopus. It is not moving, it is unmoving, but it has saw blades in its mouth. Its mouth is open. The, the octopus isn't alive. It's just a machine that looks like an octopus. And the kids in the line that I'm in are jumping into it one by one. And I don't move. I stay in the line. I keep moving with all the other kids and I'm not afraid either. I get to the metal octopus. I'm the last one in there, uh, like in line, in the line of children being eaten by the giant metal octopus. I thumbs up, like from the third person, the camera switches to like third person. I thumbs up at myself in the perspective of the camera and then I jump in and I wake up. And that is stuck with me throughout all of my days. Like Vault Boy, no, no, two thumbs up. It was basically like a, it was like a finger gun without the gun part. You know what must be done, Brendan? The machine demands a sacrifice. It demands a snacrifice. Um, another childhood dream, I talked about this during the My House stream, but another childhood dream I had was, um, I was on my parents' like back porch, um, or like deck, or like backyard basically, and there's this sliding glass door, right? There's this sliding glass door. Ooh, phone. Pick up the phone, phone guy. So anyway, I'm, I'm, uh, this other dream, I'm in this backyard area, right, where my parents uh, in, like, my parents' house, but the backyard is way smaller. It's, like, incredibly small. It's, like, 10 feet by 10 feet with, like, hedges surrounding it. And in this backyard, like, Thang, uh, there's a sliding glass door, there's a barbecue grill, and there's a star twinkling up in the sky on high. Right? So, I'm just sitting there in the backyard, and I look over at the sliding glass door and my parents are there. They're just looking at me. But they're looking at me like the American Gothic painting, where they're exactly framed as such. And I look back up into the sky and the star that is shining brightly starts... coming down from the sky. And it's this cartoon star with white gloved hands. Uh, and it's just looking at me and smiling at me. Drinky. Then it grabs me, and its teeth grow sharp. And I'm like, um, soda for you. Oh, sir. I know you're in there. I know you're in there. Soda pop for you. It, the, 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 in the dream, I got a little distracted. In the dream, the star grabs me. My parents open up the sliding glass door, and then the star puts me on the grill. 
they turn the the start turns the grill on, I wake up, and that is the dream. Uh, the third dream that I don't talk about because it's way more fucked up um, is when I was a kid, my mom cut my hair once, and she cut my ear. Ah. Uh, which I, like, fucking, I uh, dude, didn't, like, cut a chunk of my ear off or anything, just cut my ear while she was, like, cutting my hair in the bathroom. And because of that, I had this dream where I was in this great cathedral in this barber's chair, and my mom was just cutting me apart, and I wasn't feeling it. I was just, she was just, like, slowing off the flesh with a pair of scissors. Which is way more fucked up than the other two dreams, so I don't really talk about it often, but that's, like, the third one. Yeah, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Fucked up nightmare dream. It do be like that someday. It do be like this. I don't remember how you guys remember that stuff far back. I don't have memories from when I was like nine, let alone three. Uh, it really depends. Different people have different kinds of like memory. Um, I don't have a lot of like my from ages like nine to eight, 18. My life is like a blur. I have a couple of like really very, 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 very vi vivid childhood memories. Um, but otherwise, like, there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't stick in my mind. And yeah, for the- for, I feel like when it comes to memory sometimes, some things have staying power. True, I would agree with that. Memory is fickle. It's a weird beast. Um, I'm always jealous of people who have photographic memory in some ways, because in some ways it's a blessing and a curse. Life be like that. Life sometimes be like that. Life also sometimes be like a video game. I'm gonna look around a little bit in here still, or Bren here still, because I want to see if I can find, like, a- the code. But I am stupid, so... <gasps> there he fucking goes! There he fucking goes! The gibbering man! Where'd he go? 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 You gotta show yourself to be gibbering man. Get back here, gibbering man. I seen you, gibbering man. I saw you. Where'd he fucking go? I seen him. I saw the gibbering man. I've gotta follow him. Stone Cold Steve Austin says, I work at the TSA now. You gotta let me check your butthole. You got contraband up there? I'm gonna open a can of whoop ass on your ass. Let me check out your butthole real quick down to the Broken Skull Ranch. Give me a what? Give me a yeah! Stone Cold Steve Austin's putting on the long rubber glove. Stone Cold Steve Austin's gonna... Well, Stone Cold Steve... Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's, he's gotta check your butthole. I don't need a glove down to the Broken Skull Ranch. Gotta put my hand up a lot of cows' buttholes. I work at the TSA. Checking a lot of people's buttholes for contraband. What? That's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. Let me tell you something about Stone Cold. Stone Cold Cold. Stone Cold need a banky. Stone Cold need a binky. Stone Cold go to the water fountain, he need a little bit of wee -wah. What? Stone Cold a thirsty little boy. Stone Cold loves having a hyper-realistic woman doll filled entirely with milk. Stone Cold need drinky. Stone Cold had a crimulent fuck crustable of a day. Stone Cold need drinky. Stone Cold a little sleepy little guy. Stone Cold need a banky. Stone Cold need a binky. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold says so. <laughs> Stone Cold needs a massage. Stone Cold goes to the masseuse. The masseuse grabs Stone Cold's buttocks. Stone Cold says, hell yeah. Stone Cold loves looking for creatures. Stone Cold find a couple of creatures outside the Broken Skull Ranch. Stone Cold sees a real alien, a little duende out there. Swear to God, Stone Cold saw a duende out there. Every day of my life, I see a little duende. There's a little goblin that lives outside of the Broken Skull Ranch. I'll tell you what. What? What? They got a little creature out there. He's a little green man named Mr. Thompson. Stone Cold tried to Stone Cold stun Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson dissipated into the ghost like a, into the into the air like a specter, like a creature, like a ghost. And that's the bottom line. The stone. Oh, that's the bottom line. Put some powder on my bottom line. Cause Stone Cold said so. Stone Cold the broke back. No, no. Stone Cold's ranch is called the Broken Skull's Ranch. Drink a Broken Skull IPA. What? What? <laughs> they got a- they got an anomaly out here. Stone Cold doesn't take kindly to any anomaly. They put Stone Cold in the back rooms. Stone Cold's not afraid. Stone Cold, Stone Cold stunner to a couple of back rooms creatures. Stone Cold's not afraid to drink almond water. Stone Cold doesn't want to drink almond water. Stone Cold wants a Broken Skull IPA. Give me a hell yeah, give me a what? And that's the bottom line, cause Stone... Oh, I see an anomaly. I'll take a picture of that anomaly, I'm not worried about it. Stone Cold drinks anomalies. Stone Cold in the bathroom taking pissy shitties. Stone Cold find an alien. Stone Cold find a creature. Stone Cold find a camera filter. Stone Cold gotta dry his hands after taking a fat shit. Stone Cold center in the back rooms. What? What? You're talking about a liminal space. I'm talking about the squared circle, brother. Four-sided ring. You step into the squared circle. I swear to God, you step into the back rooms. I don't give a fuck. Wow. 
Stone Cold doesn't care about luggage. Stone Cold only carries two things. 24-inch massive pythons, brother. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone won't. Stone Cold is okay. You need to let go. It was your fault. Stone Cold's not worried about letting go. Stone Cold's only worried about one thing. Drinking Stone Cold IPA. Fighting at the Broken Skull Ranch. Giving a Stone Cold stunner to President Barack Obama. A Stone Cold, why? I don't know. I watched that President's Let's Play on YouTube. What? What? You ever watch a President's Let's Play? They play Minecraft. Stone Cold loves that shit. Stone Cold loves watching President play Minecraft at 3 a.m. especially. Stone Cold's a big fan of AI Presidents play Minecraft. Stone Cold loves it. Stone Cold, go to the Sierra Madre. Stone Cold, see all the gold in the Sierra Madre. Stone Cold's not worried about this. Stone Cold takes all the gold. What do you mean, begin again? What? Gotta find that VHS tape. Stone Cold loves Barney and the Rainbow Egg. It's one of uh, Stone Cold's favorite movies. Hell yeah. Is it airport we fly in economy? Stone Cold never flies economy. Stone Cold flying first class. Stone Cold class. What? 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 That's the bottom line. Because Stone won. That's the bottom Stone Woman. Or person. Chat, what would you do if you walked into a room and there's a quivering, hovering egg? The egg was hovering five meters off the ground in this big white room. What would you do? You walk into your bedroom. Like, you open the door, you close it, boom. Big white room, egg hovering in the middle of the air. What would you do? Smooth white egg in a smooth white room. Well lit, but you can't see any of the lights. You can just see that the room is white. What would you do? Would you jump at the egg and try to grab it? Hold on to it? But it's slippery. What would you do? I would shove it up my ass! It's not ass-sized. You can't fit it up there. It's a huge egg. Massive egg. Hovering in the middle of the room. Is it a wet egg? Maybe. I shove my ass up the egg. I shove the egg up my ass. I know this answer. I know the answer. I know the answer, Brendan. I know the answer, Brendan. The answer is hubris. The message of the story is hubris. I know a big egg. I would point, I think. I would point, I think, and I would say, ah, oh, big egg. And then I would walk away. Thusly. I think I would see the big egg in the big smooth white room, and I would say, ah, oh, big egg. And I would walk away. Open the door, and I'd leave. And then I open the door again, and my bedroom's back. I think if I saw a big white smooth egg in a big white smooth room, I would say, ah, oh, big egg. I would leave thusly. I would extricate my I would extricate myself from the situation. You know, I would leave thusly. You know, they're, they're, they're not letting me up into the cockpit. They're not gonna let me fly the plane. They refuse to let me up into the cockpit. I wanna talk to the pilot. Can I get a pilot hat? Can I get pilot wings? I wanna fly the plane. It's my first time. I play a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator. You should let me pl you should let me fly the plane. It'll be funny. No, oh, uh, you know what you're doing, right, Brendan? Nope, no idea. It'll be funny. Let me do it. Let me get a hold of the plane. Let me, let me, let me just get a hold of the plane. Let me get my grippy grab, my grippy grappers all over that. Let me on the flight stick. Let me on the plane. You gotta let me into the pilot. You gotta let me into the cockpit. You gotta. You gotta let me fly the plane. You gotta. I should be allowed to fly the plane. You gotta, you gotta, dude. You gotta. Oh shit, let me fly the plane? No. They won't let me into the cockpit, but they will let me into first class. Creature, I saw you, bitch. Yeah, that's right, creature. I got you on camera. I didn't take a picture of the- I could have taken a picture of the creature, but... I saw him. On the Wednesday. Brendan, tell me a cool story. There once was a man named Gold Roger. My treasure is yours for the taking. I left it all in one piece. There once was a man named Gold Roger. And that's it. That, nothing important about this man. There was just a man named Gold Roger. There once was a man named Gold Roger. And that's it. Nobody knows what he did. Nobody knows who he was. But he was a guy. Did he take a bite of gum gum? No, I've heard pray tell that it was a guy named Luffy who took a bite of gum gum. Twasn't a man named Gold Roger who took a bite of gum gum. Twas a boy named Luffy. Brennan, I had a big bowl of spaghetti at 4 a.m. I am in bliss. I had a really... Shelby's been buying these chips that are really good, and I have, like, uh, maybe one of them every couple of days, and I had one uh, while I was on my little break there. They're these pro... What? Okay, I thought that screamed like a man for a second. Uh, and I had a, I had a thing, uh, the protein chips on my break, and I'm like, these are really good. They're pretty good chips. Stone Cold's a thirsty little guy. Stone Cold's thirsty. Stone Cold need wee -wah. Give him a little drinky. What? Oh. Stone Cold doesn't want to drink in the big fountain. Stone Cold wants to drink in the little fountain. Let me have a little drinky. Stone Cold puts his whole mouth over that thing. Stone Cold needs to. Make Stone Cold stronger. Stone Cold's a thirsty little fella. Stone Cold loves a little drinky and a little nap. Stone Cold needs his 4 p.m. nap. Stone Cold's gonna get cranky. Ba -ba 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 
at the airport. You can do so many things. You can fly on a plane at the airport. At the airport, you can chill out and have a really good time. At the airport, you can drink here. Nobody's gonna judge you for a beer at 9 a.m. at the airport. We're gonna lose your luggage. Can I be a luggage boy? This bullshit, I can't be luggage. This sucks, dude. Let me get a quick pick. Nice, nice, pretty cool, nice. At the airport, you can find so many things like an overpriced sandwich or an overpriced beer. You can also find 20 dollars sandwich at the airport 20 dollars sandwich is you i'm shopping here out here in hell i love to shop and i love the smell of a viscous shop that sells bells brendan can you give advice for tech oh shit he working a job on a computer oh shit he just works retail he's just some little guy he just work here fuck yeah dude flashbang him Flashbang him. Fucking got him. Oh, did that not count? What happened? Did I break it? I broke the game. Got him. There we go. Weird. He took my fucking camera. What a little freak. It'd be fucked up if you woke up one day and bears were just pets. You could just have, right? And so, like, they're selling fucking bear shampoo and bear conditioner at the bet store. Be wild. I mean, they, yeah, technically. I mean, some people have bets, bear, bear pets, but like, it's not a normal thing, right? It would be way more fucked up if it's just you woke up one day and somebody domesticated bears. You were just in the universe where bears were domesticated. They were like dogs. Bears are massive. They're huge. Where do you get bear food? Yeah, true. And you'd have to feed. Uh, you'd have to spend a lot of money on bears for bear food. War bears. There's old friends and new friends and even a bear. Through good times and bad times, there's so much to share. How many seasons did the Cleveland show get? All I remember about the Cleveland show is that David Lynch is in it. And that still like boggles the mind. David Lynch is just in that show as a reoccurring character. And that's just crazy. Four seasons where David Lynch plays a bartender in the Cleveland show. Yeah, David Lynch is the bartender in the Cleveland show. David Lynch just does stuff sometimes and it's kind of like Patrick Stewart when I found out he was an American dad and I was like, what? Now sing Banana Man. I don't know Banana Man. I don't know Banana Man. Sing Banana Man, Brendan. Be when I'm a banana and I am in fact a man. Going through the motions every day without a worry, without a plan. I am the banana. I am the man. I don't know. I don't know Banana Man. I'm sorry. I am the banana, I am the man, I am the banana, and I am a man. I don't know all of Tally Hall, dude. I don't listen to every, like, song made by a band. I'm not intimately aware of every song made by a band. I listen to the one album. Don't- Alien! Don't open. There's the creature. Gotcha. Fucking got him, baby. Yeah! Hey, Fryman! Got a couple of- What is it? Hey, uh, Fryman, I got a- Got a bones to pick with you. I, uh, I saw a couple of little creatures, uh, out by your backyard, fry man. And, uh, I just, I want to know, uh, what's the, uh, what's the dealio? I was the opposite. I was always forced to listen to classic rock and sports talk radio because of my dad. And then a friend sent me a Panic at the Disco album and it all changed. I grew up very sheltered in some ways, um, in weird ways. I, I didn't really make a lot of friends, um, until high school. When I was a kid, because I moved and because, like, I lived on a farm, any of the friends I made back when I was little, I just didn't, I didn't hold on to those relationships or bonds. And, like, realistically, like, my, my grandpa was a huge influence on me in terms of, like, the music I listened to, kind of, because he would just listen to, like, the Eagles. But at the same time, like, he never was somebody who would force it upon you. And my grandma, growing up, was so incredibly wonderful. Um, in the ways that she would want to engage in what I was into, i.e. she would play RuneScape. She would um, listen to Eminem, put it on in the car for long car rides for me. Uh, 
or put like the weird CDs I would burn with a bunch of weird shit on them, like Numa Numa and 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 Lemon Demon and weird internet songs that would go like. <laughs> um, and I honestly I credit my grandma for me being even some semblance of normal because she was she actively was a, a part of my life and is. You know, and yeah, she stole my obby whip when I was in eighth grade and was still pissed about it, but, um, she's a very important person to me. And the, the ways that she would want to actively be a part of the things I was interested in, um, made my life a lot better because of that. Did she defend herself in court yet? No, that's my other grandma. No, there's, 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 there's Nana Paula, love her to death. Still, I call her once a week. One of my favorite people in the world. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, Nana Sean, and Nana Sean was arrested for selling methamphetamine, but she, uh, 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 I think everything turned out fine with that because that was a couple of years ago, and I, I haven't talked to her in like a year. I'm <laughs> Birthday! <laughs> uh, Brendan Lore. You gotta continue the family business, Brendan. No, I do fucking not. I'm not continuing the family business. Did you listen to theme songs more than actual songs? My my music listening experience was really weird because for a while I just didn't get music. And so I was one of those people who would like, I had a little fake MP3 player from like Walmart. Not fake, but you know, it wasn't like an iPod or a Zune. It was one of those cheap Walmart MP3 players, right? And um, this, this MP3 player had literally had like Numa Numa on it. And like some random rap rock songs I downloaded and Lemon Demon and that was it. I, I That's why I try to explore new music or, or find new things too is because I was so bad about experiencing it in general that like I, I just didn't absorb music the artistically in the way other people did. I just like to sing. That was a big thing for me as a kid. I was in choir. I was a theater kid. I was a choir kid. I just like to sing. Corn, yeah. Corn is mom music. My mom loved new metal. I was at the gym, um, I mean, I guess earlier today, but like technically yesterday because it's 4 a.m. now. I was at the gym and my mom fucking jump scared me. It's terrifying to have your mom just, happy birthday! It's Shelby's birthday in the fifth. Um, balloon. But yeah, my mom fucking jump scared me at the gym. My wife like taps me on the shoulder while I'm on the treadmill and my I just turn and there's my mom on the treadmill next to my wife and I'm like, what? Mom! Scared the shit out of me. Your birthday was yesterday? No, my, my wife's birthday is on the 5th. No, it wasn't my birthday. It wasn't my birth wife's birthday. My wife's birthday is on the 5th. My wife, uh, Shelby's birthday is on the 5th. Your mom was just at the gym? Yeah, she goes there to tan and to use the treadmill. My mom goes to the gym. She works out. Happy wife birthday. My birthday is June 29th. I am 31 on June 29th. Amazing. You're 38 now, Brendan. No, you're 39 now, Brendan? That's crazy. Holy shit, guys, get in here. Brendan's 49. Oh my god, guys, get in here, get in here. Bre P Paul's about to say something. Brendan, how old are you now? 77? Can't believe he's 50. It's not my birthday. Stop it. You know I hate the birthday bit, chat. I'm gonna put my foot down. I'm gonna authorize mod strikes. I'm gonna authorize I'm gonna weaponize the mods. You gotta stop. I hate the birthday bit. Don't trick people into birthday thinking. I don't like it. Stone Cold Steve Austin says I just whooped your ass. Stone Cold Steve Austin says I just kissed you. Right in the mouth. Fuck. Now you're gay for Stone Cold. <laughs> what are you, gay for Stone Cold Steve Austin? Sorry. Now you're gay for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Welcome to the Broken Skull Ranch. <laughs> what are you going to kiss Stone Cold Steve Austin? You better. You're going to go furniture shopping with Stone Cold Steve Austin? Better think about it. It's going to be awesome. We're going to go to Ikea. Get some of the Stone Cold meatballs. Brendan, the second he started doing that, the baby next door started crying. Stone Cold is Steve Austin says he speaks at a frequency that is specifically upsetting to babies. Stone Cold Steve Austin calls his voice the baby ray because it sends a beam attack directly at any babies in a 4,000 mile radius. Stone Cold Steve Austin says you're only unleashing Stone Cold's power. Stone Cold Steve Austin says don't do it. Don't make Stone Cold Steve Austin unleash the baby ray. Stone Cold's going to upset so many babies. <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin is not allowed near daycares. Not because Stone Cold Steve Austin is weird or nothing, but Stone Cold Steve Austin just upsets too many babies. They see Stone Cold, they see how bald he is, kind of like a baby is. They get intimidated by Stone Cold. They think Stone Cold is the ultimate baby, the muscle baby. Stone Cold, how are we going to escape the back rooms? Stone Cold knows how to get out of the back rooms. Hold on to your almond water, we're getting out of here. Stone Cold's just going to start kicking down the doors until the back rooms acquiesce. Stone Cold knows the back rooms got to acquiesce inevitably. Hold on to your almond water, we're going to get out of here. We go to every level of the back rooms, we just start kicking doors down. Stone Cold knows what's up. 
Stone Cold's not afraid of liminal spaces. Stone Cold's been in a program with The Rock. Stone Cold knows what rock bottom looks like. It's a move. Dwayne The Rock Johnson does. Stone Cold will get out of the back room. Stone Cold's going to go back to the Broken Skulls Ranch. Stone Cold's going to give his kitty cat a hug. Stone Cold's going to hang out with a couple of cool people. Stone Cold's going to go on the Jimmy Fallon show. Stone Cold's going to Stone Cold stunner Jimmy Fallon. It's going to be incredible. Stone Cold... <laughs> put Stone Cold in Ghostbusters. Stone Cold bust every ghost. Stone Cold's not afraid of no ghost. Stone Cold be busting. How do you think those skulls get broken at the Broken Skull Ranch? Stone Cold bust them. Stone Cold a big fan of busting. Stone Cold will always bust. Ready, if your stream had a smell, what would it be? Lavender and then uh, just a wafting fart every five minutes. A nice scented lavender smell, but every five minutes there's like a, a skosh of, of fart. Like drifting and wafting. Because you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Stone Cold made a boom boom in his shorts. Better help Stone Cold out. Stone Cold got to change out of his diaper. Stone Cold needs some wee-wah. Stone Cold needs his slime. Oh shit. Oh fuck yeah. Cartoons. Censored. Never mind. They put cancel culture in Bugs Bunny. Ridiculous. <laughs> Are you telling me in the 1930s and 40s and 50s, they made Bugs Bunny woke? You're ridiculous. I can't believe they wokered Bugs Bunny. They censored him. Why would they do this? Make Bugs Bunny woke? Oh, God damn it. Stone Cold Steve Austin got skinnamaricked again. God damn skinnamaricked demons around here play with Legos and shish. Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't want to be skinnamaricked. Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to find the door and leave. Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't want to be skinnamaricked down here. You can't skinnamarick Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're ridiculous. I got to get out of here. Broken Skull Ranch needs me. Stone Cold can't be skinnamaricked. Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to talk to you. He's going to stop you. Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to do one thing and one thing only. Gonna whoop ass. Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to find you. He's going to get you. Better be wary. Stone Cold's out there. He's out there at the Broken Skull Ranch. Crack it open a couple of cans of whoop ass. Couple of cans of Stone Cold Broken IPA. Stone Cold needs ice. Stone Cold needs a slurpfish. <laughs> Stone Cold dropping at Tilted Towers. Stone Cold's not worried about anything at Tilted Towers. Stone Cold's dropping in Tomato Town. Stone Cold's going to Dusty Divot. Stone Cold do anything you want to do with Dusty Divot. Stone Cold get a triple kill at Dusty Divot. What do you think Stone Cold's going to stop you? Stone Cold's never going to stop you. Stone Cold's never going to stop. Stone Cold's going to live forever. Stone Cold's going to break into Fort Knox. Steal all the gold bars. Stone Cold never played Sierra Madre dead money. Stone Cold never knows about to begin again. Stone Cold never knows to let go. Begin again. What do you mean? That's gold. They got the Sierra Madre. They got gold there. Stone Cold's going to finish the battle pass. Stone Cold's going to get those V-Bucks. What do you think Stone Cold's not going to get all the V-Bucks out of the battle pass? You're crazy. Stone Cold used to create a Cobra and Daniel. <laughs> Stone Cold was told not to put a fork in an electrical socket. Stone Cold's going to do it anyway. Stone Cold doesn't listen to what they say. Why would Stone Cold listen? Stone Cold's going to be a bad boy. Stone Cold's never going to be in trouble. What do you think Stone Cold's going to get in trouble? Ain't going to happen. Mom loves me. I'm Mom's favorite son. Stone Cold's going to get that number one victory royale. Stone Cold's dropping at Tilted. Stone Cold's getting just aces at Tilted. Stone Cold's cranking 90s. Stone Cold's going to crank so many 90s. Stone Cold's going to crank so many 90s. It's going to look like the Senior Citizen Center here. Gonna look like the retirement home. How many 90s I'm cranking? Cranking so many 90s. An incredulous amount of 90s. <laughs> okay, Google. Play Stone Cold's theme song. Glass breaking. Stone Cold loves going to the hot springs. Stone Cold always drinks a coffee milk after leaving the hot springs. What are you insane? Give me your soda. Let Stone Cold take a sip. Also, I don't know, like, the Stone Cold voice is a little Bill Clinton-y, but, like, Bill Clinton's way more. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Michelle. Oh, Michelle, not, uh, Hillary. Hillary. Michelle is Obama's wife. I don't know why he got that confused. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I'm gonna play smooth jazz. Deploying smooth jazz in three, two, one. Remember me, Eddie? <laughs> when I killed your brother? I looked something like this. <laughs> Stone Cold looking for TV. Stone Cold need a TV. Stone Cold Steve Austin looking for a TV. Stone Cold Steve Austin 316. But also, like, I have, I've never practiced my Stone Cold impression. It's just been in my head lately. I know it's not that good. I've just had it, like, locked in my mind. It's a definite 3 out of 10, maybe the worst Stone Cold impression you've ever heard. But I've just had it in my head for the last, like, two weeks. Stone Cold loves Adventure Time. Stone Cold loves Finn, Jake, Cake, Fiona, Ice King, all of them. Stone Cold be like, why'd they give that cat such a fat ass? <laughs> Stone Cold's just saying it. Stone Cold bought Raven Team Leader in Fortnite. Stone Cold does the Family Guy dance with Raven Team Leader in Fortnite. Don't worry about it. 
Stone Cold does what he wants. That's the bottom line. Would it be fucking crazy if Raven Team Leader had an emo where she split her pants and farted? Gotta get that orange VHS tape. Gotta find me my Rugrats. Look for Tommy, Dill, Phil, and Lil. Uh, Chucky Finster, he's one of my favorites. I always cry whenever I think about Chucky Finster. His mom, man, that movie made me cry. Stone Cold hates that movie, but he loves that movie just the same. Brendan, you have to let go. Brendan, let go, Brendan. Release yourself. Let go. Stone Cold's not ready to let go. Stone Cold can't let go. It's too stone cold out there. How do you expect stone cold to let go when it's too cold? It's too stone cold. You have to let go, stone cold. The accident was years ago. It's not your fault. What do you mean it's not my fault? Stone Cold was driving the Zamboni. Stone Cold knows what he did. All those kids on the ice. Stone Cold, it's not your fault. The Zamboni went out of control, Stone Cold. You gotta let go. Stone Cold, you gotta let go. It's not your fault. Zamboni was malfunctioning. You have to let go. Stone Cold was just trying to teach these kids hockey. Stone Cold was just gonna show them how to clean the rink. Stone Cold ain't ready to leave yet. Stone Cold has so many things Stone Cold can still do. Stone Cold, I'm sorry. Stone Cold, you have to let go. It wasn't your fault. You can't hold on to this trauma anymore. You have to let go. Stone Cold's not ready to let go. Stone Cold wants to hold it inside of him. Stone Cold doesn't want to let go of this. Stone Cold, you have to. You have to let go, buddy. It's not your fault. You're better than this now. You're Stone Cold. Stone Cold was just trying to have some fun. Stone Cold was just trying to show people what it means like to play hockey. Hit a couple of pucks into the goal. Stone Cold, it wasn't your fault. The Zamboni was malfunctioning. Stone Cold, you have to let go, bud. You have to find a way to move on. Stone Cold doesn't want to move on. Stone Cold's going to Stone Cold stun of the devil. What is the devil going to do? Get Stone Cold stunned. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. Stone Cold's not ready to go. Stone Cold doesn't want to leave. Why? What? What? Stone Cold's gotta go. Stone Cold can't stay in this place anymore. It's too Stone Cold. What? Austin 316. Says it gotta begin again. He let go. It's okay. He learned to let go and begin again. I'm gonna cry if you keep putting Stone Cold through this. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> what about Macho Man? I can do a really bad Macho Man. Oh yeah, cream. Let me tell you something. The Macho Man is not afraid and he's not worried either. The Macho Man fears nothing but himself. The Macho Man knows what is up, uh, and he knows what is down. Uh, he's not worried about anything. Uh. Oh, yeah, the cream. The cream always rises. Uh. Yeah, but the Macho Man voice hurts a little bit, so. Hulkster. Oh, yeah, you're telling me. Oh, yeah. Do Hulk Hogan poop in my gym, brother. H.H. Poop in my gym, brother. Let me tell you something, little hawksters. You better eat your vitamins. You better eat your minerals. You better do your homework. Poop in my gym, brother. It's better than your Stone Cold. Yeah, my Macho Man is probably better than my Stone Cold. The thing about me, Jesse Ventura, is a lot of people... <laughs> oh, yeah. The government is secretly controlling your mind. Smithers, turn on Ben Daniel's stream. Ah, yes, Mr. Burns. Smithers, turn on cream. Smithers, go to Brindaniel.com. Ah, yes, Mr. Burns, absolutely. Now, Smithers, tell me, what is Brindaniel doing? Ah, uh, he's watching a VHS tape, sir. Uh, looks to be a little haunted. Mm, Smithers, come. Smithers, up the 4D, 3D, 3. Smithers, give me a flargin stomp. Uh, the Spurbs. Welcome to the Spurbs. Enjoy your stay at the Spurbs. Ding dong ditch. Open up. Open up. Let me in. You gotta let me in. Hello? I'm here to sell you a vacuum cleaner. Nobody wants to buy. Why? Circles. Oh, there we go. Right there. Right there. Right there. 
Right there. You see it? Right there. It's pretty good. YouTube thumbnail. Right there. Right there. You see that? Tree. Right there. Tree. Tree spotted. Right there. Tree. We got him. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Tree. Wake the fuck up. Wake the fuck up. Oh my god, it's War of the Worlds out here. George Orwell was right this whole time. You gotta wake up. Get out. They got the walkers. The tripods are out here. Wake up. They got the tripods out here. You gotta wake up, please. They got the tripods out here, dude. Dude, you gotta wake up. The tripods are out. They're walking around. It's fucking crazy. Dude, you gotta walk. Wake the fuck up. The tripods are out here. Nobody ever falls for it. The boy who cried tripod. <laughs> the boy who cried pod. <laughs> right there. He's gotta be right there. Right there. He's gotta be right there. Awesome. We got him. Get him in focus. Get him in focus. YouTube thumbnail. Fucking got him. Hey, hey. You gotta wake up. You gotta wake up. Dude, 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 dude. Dude, WrestleMania is on. Dude, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he's fighting Hulk Hogan. You gotta come over to my house, dude. You gotta wake up. Dude, 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 you gotta wake up, dude. Dude, dude, wake up right now, dude. Just gotta copy a Mortal Kombat again. I'm running it from the blockbuster. You gotta wake up, dude. I swear to fucking God, dude. You gotta come over. Got on the PS2. They got Ta they got Draven in there. They got meat. They got Su Hao. All your favorites. This level big, though. Got him. Fucking totally got him with that. Great picture, Brendan. Amazing shots, Brendan. Yeah, I got a photography class, and uh, yeah, my teacher is actually impressed because I have a vintage original Polaroid. It's pretty cool. Did y'all know that Polaroid made TVs? I don't know if many people knew that, but like, and not just like, you're talking, oh yeah, well, a lot of companies back in the 90s and early 2000s made TVs. No, no, no. For a while, and I don't know if this is still true, but for a while, Polaroid was selling flat screen televisions at Target. And I found this out because working at Best Buy, somebody brought in a flat screen Polaroid television when I worked at Best Buy. And I'm like, I think about Polaroids and I think about that one fucking weird person who brought in a Polaroid TV to have it looked at that they got it like Target. And it was like a flat screen TV from like 2000 and like 18, 19. Yeah, they made flat screen TVs. They made LED TVs. And like a person, I don't think they made them. I think they just slapped their logo on them. Might have might been like a fucking same thing as like Roku and TCL does. Well, TCL makes some of their TVs. They don't make all the parts of their TVs. Imagine being a gray alien and minding your own business and some hungry looking ass man at college student with a camera and a flashlight snaps your photo in the middle of the night. What the fuck? Yeah, um, you have an original vintage Polaroid and my, my teacher said I'm actually very cool and handsome. Um, and he says that I'm going to get the big grade this year. It's going to be so cool. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. One second. Alien pooping? Alien pooping? Alien dookie? Got him. Man's is just trying to take a shit, Brendan. Huh? Leave him alone, Brendan. Man's is trying to take a shit. Alien Dookie. Fucking got him. Man's dubious be pooping.